So we talked about how the Newton's law, f equal to ma, uh, if you differentiate the position twice, you get the acceleration. So this is really f equal to ma plus c times x prime. This is the velocity. That, that's the uh, coefficient for friction. And then the Hooke's law, kx, <coughs> equal to 0 gives you the vibration from a, a spring dash pot uh, mass system, okay? spring mass dash pot system. And then today I want to talk about what happens if you have external force, so F0 cosine omega Let's put the omega zero here. Now we can actually attempt to solve this with generic F naught and, and omega naught. F naught is the maximum force. Omega is the uh, angular frequency of the, this external force. By the way, uh, you've probably learned in physics that if you have uh, 2 pi divided by omega naught, that gives you the period of this sinusoidal periodic motion, which is same as 1 over f, because uh, period is same as 1 over the, the frequency. And uh, if you solve this for f, you actually get <coughs> the formula that f is equal to omega naught over 2 pi, and also that omega naught is equal to 2 pi f. From, from this, what, what I wanted to say was that this omega naught handles, controls the frequency of the external force. Okay? And f naught is the maximum force of this thing. Okay. Let's actually try to solve it. Uh, of course, by method of undetermined coefficients, we can solve this. So first, let's write down the characteristic equation. Because that gives you the complementary solution, right? Putting this into the quadratic formula gives you these values, and uh, if I call this well, okay, uh, whatever this is, we're going to assume that C is non-zero. Uh, if C is zero, there is some interesting that, that goes on, but for this one, uh, I'll handle that in a separate case. So we're going to say that C is not 0. And uh, think about this. Well, what kind of solution does this give you? If these are two reals, then you get e to the negative r1t and e to the negative r2t. Those will be your two solutions. If, there is, if this thing is 0, which is the case we call the critically damped case, in that case, r1 and r2 are the same. Uh, which is the case when you put an extra t here. And the third case is when this is negative, uh, that I call it, it uh, underdamped. Right. If it's underdamped, then the, the solution looks like, so if underdamped means the solution looks like alpha plus minus beta. And let me put a negative alpha here because uh, C and M are always positive, and, and really alpha is C over 2M here. And there's always this minus value. That means that your YC, or XT, the complement, uh, complementary solution, looks like E 
to the negative alpha t times cosine c1 times cosine beta t plus c2 times sine beta t. And what I want you to first notice is that in any case, whether it's uh, over damped or critically damped or under damped, you always have the xt as a decreasing <coughs> function, xt as a function whose magnitude becomes closer to zero as time progresses. So if t is large and you have e to the negative of a large number, what is that? e to the negative infinity is? zero, right? Because uh, negative infinity is 1 over e to the infinity, so that's equal to zero. So that means that uh, the at, at time infinity, the, s the block comes to a halt. It, it comes to a halt. It no longer moves. Which is understandable because c not equal to zero means you have friction in the system. Friction in the system means you're going to lose energy through the, the friction force. Okay, uh, so that's what we see. And then uh, another thing I want you to notice is that in none of these cases, this is duplicated. You see that? I mean, even with the underdamped case, you still have e to some some power, and this doesn't have e to any power. So these are not duplicated. This is never in the complementary solution. Therefore, we can now confidently go towards to work on the particular, x particular, as uh, some a times cosine omega naught t. Is that what we need for method of uh, determined coefficients? Huh? Sign. We also need the sign, right? Because we have to include not only what you see on the right, but all its possible derivatives, right? If you differentiate cosine, you get sine. So we need this. So to be more exact, if you differentiate this, you get negative cosine omega naught t times another omega naught, but uh, constant multiples are discarded because v can be anything. So this is what we want to set up as method of undetermined coefficients. Now we plug this on the left side. It's going to be very big, but uh, we don't have much choice. Uh, by the way, this is still better than trying to solve this using a variation of parameters. So you should stop complaining. <coughs> keep com computing. That's the first derivative. Second derivative is once you have it done, then a nice trick is to multiply <laughs> coefficients, see, for x double prime I need m, so I multiply m, so multiply by m, and then for cx x prime I need a c, so multiply by c, and then for x I need k, so I put k here, and then add everything, because then I have on the left side mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx, just like here. While on the right side, we have some gigantic thing for the cosine omega naught t, and another gigantic thing for sine omega naught t. Now, let's try to figure out what goes here. For cosine omega naught t, I have this, this, that. Okay. Let's just write one by one. I have a k, and then omega naught c b, and then finally this one, minus 
omega naught squared m a. And for this one, I wish I had more space here. For this one, I need bk plus omega naught cb. And then, oh, sorry, this, this should be a minus. Where are you getting the, uh, the k, c's, and the uh, m's from? Uh, usually, they are given by the problem. So if the question is given as, like, there's a spring with a spring constant 500 newtons per meters with uh, uh, resistance provided by the dash pot as uh, something new, uh, newton, time, newton seconds per meters, those will, will just give you all these values. Okay, so, but, but we're trying to, to assume that these are given, but we're trying to solve it in, in the most generic fashion as possible. Any other questions? All right. Now, I want this to be equal to what? We're trying to solve this using method of undetermined coefficients. This has to equal to what? Zero. No. Zero. It should equal to F zero cosine omega naught. That's equal to the right side. And therefore, we have the following. Let's put these two together. Oh, I messed up here again. BK. Yeah, this is. Uh, this is plus, right? And this is minus. And therefore, we have the following equations. First, uh, A times K minus omega naught squared M plus B times omega naught C equals to what? What, what? The right side. What? The right side. Yeah, but, but what is this? This is the coefficient of this cosine when it's not t, right? So what is it equal to? undetermined coefficient simply means you assume that the solution is in this form with some unknown a and unknown b, okay? And what you need to do is you have to figure out what this a and b are, right? So you plug this into the left side and hope that it's equal to the right side. That's what we are doing, right? We computed the left side, we got this, and we are hoping that it's equal to this. Right? For this to equal to that, as functions of t, say so remember this. This differential equation is an equation between two functions. Okay, x. I mean, the solution should be functions of t. So whenever you see this equation, you should think of this as a functional equation between uh, functions of t. Okay, so this is a function of t. That's a function of t. I need them to be equal to each other. Right. Now I see f naught cosine omega naught t, okay, on the right side. So if this has to equal to that, what should this equal to? Huh? It has to be equal to f naught. Because think about it, if this is same as that, then these two agree, so will it, will it be equal, right? Okay, what about the next one? Uh, a times negative omega naught c, plus uh, b times k minus omega naught squared m equal to. What should this equal to? 
Hmm? It has to equal to zero, right? Because there's no sign term on the right side. So this has to be zero, this has to be F naught, in order for the left side to equal to the right <laughs> side. Right. I, I think uh, you're just a little overwhelmed because we have too many letters here. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have been much easier if, you, if I gave you concrete numbers. But then, if you work with concrete numbers, sometimes you, you don't understand what's going on. It's, it's, uh, uh, there's definitely a theoretical side that you gain, uh, there's a theoretical insight that you gain by keeping them as generic numbers, okay? All right, so we have to solve this. How do we solve this? Well, you just uh, solve for one of the variables and plug it into the next. I think uh, this, is, this is easy to solve because it, I can move that to the other side and say B times K minus omega naught squared M is negative omega naught C A, and now uh, no, it's positive because I, I moved it to the other side, and now I divide by omega naught C both sides, and now I have what A is equal to. Then I, after solving the second one, I plug into the first one to, to solve, solve it, right? So after I plug this inside A, here's what I get. I get B, times k minus omega naught squared m over omega naught c. Remember, this much was a. Right? This a is now replaced by that. But I still have that, so k minus omega naught squared m is here. And then plus b times omega naught c, and that's equal to f naught. Now, I don't like having fractions in the denominator, so let's multiply this to the other side. So if I multiply omega naught c to both sides, this will go away, but this will be squared, and that, that will have omega naught c there. Okay? So here's what I have. After multiplying, I get uh, b times k minus omega naught squared m squared plus omega naught squared c squared equal to f naught omega naught c. Which is now solved for b as b equals to f naught omega naught c over k minus omega naught squared m squared plus omega naught c squared squared. And then going back to this one, you can, you can multiply by this and divide by omega naught c to get a. So you can get the value of a. So let's see what, what that gives us, OK? So we have the value of A from here. So A is now equal to uh, F naught. Omega naught C will be deleted by dividing by omega naught C. And if, if you multiply this, that's going to be on the top. And that K minus omega naught M squared plus omega naught. Okay, therefore, the solution is the following. You have x of p equal to f naught over f naught over k minus omega naught squared m squared plus omega naught squared c squared. And this is common for both a and b, so let's pull that out. And for a, I, the, the extra factor that I have is this. And that's associated with, a is associated with cosine, right? So that has cosine omega 
uh, t plus uh, b is associated with omega naught c. Uh, b is associated with sine omega naught t. And because the, the b is this times omega naught c, that's what I put. Uh, that's what I have. And then, at this point, I need to simplify this further to, to gain any insight. This really doesn't tell us anything unless we can simplify this further. So let me show you uh, some, some formulas that you should know. Uh, it's that if you have A cosine omega t plus B sine omega t, this can be written as square root of a squared plus b squared cosine omega t minus alpha, where alpha is tangent inverse of b over a plus an extra angle theta. And theta depends on the a axis and the b axis, if it's in the first quadrant, you don't add anything. In the second quadrant, you don't add anything. But if it's in the third or second or third quadrant, you have to uh, put something here. You, you should either add pi if it's in the second quadrant. It, you should uh, subtract pi if it's in the third quadrant. Of course, uh, sometimes uh, you, you would use degrees for this, and that in the degrees case, you'll be using 180 added or 180 subtracted. All right, so uh, this is the formula that I would like to explain a, a, a right after this. So, so let's just accept this for now, okay? I'll explain this right after this, okay? All right, so using this, we can rewrite this into square root of k minus omega naught squared m squared plus omega naught c squared squared times cosine omega naught t minus alpha. And then attaching this in the front, f naught over k minus omega naught m squared plus omega naught c squared. And at this point, I'm not too worried about this alpha, OK? Uh, this alpha is called phase angle. Uh, in uh, LCR circuits, uh, this phase angle tells you whether the current is trailing the capacitor or inductor or the voltage source by how much. That's, that's what it tells you, but uh, uh, here I, I'm not worried about alpha. I just want to know what this is. Because what is this? This is the amplitude of the uh, particular solution, right? Um, and notice that these two are the same thing. So I can think of this as this thing squared, and one of them could cancel the top. So I have the amplitude equal to that part. And that's, that's actually the important result that we just found. Okay? So here's what we have. The amplitude of the particular solution <coughs> is f naught over square root of k minus omega naught m. Uh, there's a sugar square here. That's the amplitude. And the uh, question is, when is this the, the largest? So think about it like this. Let's say you're able to change the external frequency somehow. Right? Then the question is, 
given that the 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 amplitude of the external force is unchanged, what would maximize this quantity, the particular solution? And the reason is uh, the reason that we asked the question is the following. Here, here's, a, here's what we, we have so far. See, I know that the general solution is complementary plus particular, right? What happens at, when time t goes to infinity? What happens to xc? What happens to the complementary solution? Goes to zero. Goes to zero, right? When what happens? To the complementary solution, it goes to zero, right? As time goes to infinity. Well, what about this? It's this, right? Does this die off to zero? No. No. It always maintains this periodic thing, right? So what happens is that if external force was much, much smaller <coughs> than the initial vibration of the system, then here's what happens. If initially it would have some kind of vibration, naturally, but then the, the, the natural, natural vibration will quickly die off. And at some point, you, you're going to have the vibration given by this external force. Right? So this will be an example of such a vibration when this f naught is much smaller than the initial x0, okay? And uh, it, will, it will have uh, this vibration, okay? So there is another name for these, and th these are the things that you have to know. By the way, uh, we, we've done a lot of calculations, and if you are nervous about how much you have to know, uh, you just have to know the, I mean, you don't even have to remember this, but uh, you should be able to, calculate the maximum value of this. I'm going to show that a little later. Okay, so but deriving this is not, not what you need to know. Um, so, so don't worry about that one. Uh, but this you have to know. You have to know that xc is called transient solution. Because it, this xc is really temporary. It dies off to zero, so when you have this plus this, this term goes away to zero, so after some time, this loses its significance. It doesn't do anything, right? And then xp, the particular solution, is called x steady periodic. Okay. Steady periodic. Because this doesn't die off. It's, it's steady. It never dies off. It, it's, it's a steady and periodic kind of part of the solution. So at time t very large, this loses much significance, and this is mainly what you're seeing. Okay, does that make sense? All right. So that, that's what you need to know. That, that's the first fact that you have to